Welcome to part B of the second tutorial about the AG granular suite. In this tutorial, we will review all grain parameters which can be controlled with the control module. We will also look at features specific to some control units. In the top left corner, there is the source control unit. It controls which of the loaded samples is used for a particular grain. If the source parameter is set to non-integer value, the grain will be formed by interpolating two samples occupying two adjacent slots. For example, if the source parameter is 28.5, the produced grain will be a mixture of samples 28 and 29, with both of them contributing equally to the mix. By the way, for this to work, the source slash interpolate parameter of the engine module has to be turned on. The next parameter is the grain length, which specifies the length of a grain in milliseconds. Let's turn on real-time grain highlighting to visualize the lengths of the grains as they are being triggered. When this feature is on, the waveform display will update on every grain trigger to reflect the currently used sample, as well as position and the length of the grain. The length control unit has an extra drop-down menu, which can be used to change how the randomizer affects the values of the length parameter. The first one, the absolute mode, is the default for all other control units, and it means that the randomly generated value is added to the current parameter value as defined by the list algorithm and the offset. So, for example, if parameter value before randomization is 100, and the maximum deviation is set to 50, then after randomization, the parameter value could fall anywhere between 50 and 150. Now, if we change the base value to 200, the resulting range will be 150 to 250. In the relative mode, the randomly generated value is first multiplied by the current grain length before the addition. So if grain length before randomization is 100, then the maximum deviation has to be set to 0.5 in order to achieve the output range of 50 to 150. However, if we now change the base length to 200, the resulting range will be 100 to 300. The last is the log base mode, which is also relative, but the range is calculated on a log base 2 scale. To calculate the resulting range from a given base value and maximum deviation, you can think of the length as if it was frequency expressed in hertz and the maximum deviation was defined in octaves. Let's look at an example. If the base length is 100 and the maximum deviation is 1, then the resulting range is 50 to 200, which is plus minus 1 octave from 100 hertz. Now if we change the base length to 200, the resulting range will be from 100 to 400. Some research has shown that this way of randomizing grain length is the most perceptually valid. You can look up the equations used for calculating the ranges in different modes in the HTML documentation of the control module. The transposition control unit was discussed in detail in the previous tutorial, so let's skip to the top right corner to the delay control unit. The delay parameter specifies how long in milliseconds the engine will wait after it receives the trigger before it actually synthesizes the grain. We can add a random delay to each grain in order to turn a synchronous stream into an asynchronous one or to humanize a rhythmic sequence.
Delay can be also used in conjunction with the trigger slash multi parameter to program bursts or sequences of grains, which can be generated with a single trigger. We will talk about it a bit more in the next tutorial. The maximum deviation of the delay parameter can be linked to the speed of the sequential trigger source, the FTM play. This will also be covered in the next tutorial, in which we will talk about the trigger sources in detail. Next is the position parameter. This one is used to specify the start of a grain within a sample. The position value is relative to the sample length, which means that 0 is the beginning of a sample, 0 0.5 is exactly in the middle, and 1 is at the end. This ensures that if we randomize the position parameter within the 0, 1 range, and at the same time randomize the source parameter, the grain onset will never fall beyond the length of any of the samples, even if their lengths vary. This way of specifying grain onset is also useful for bit shuffling, since the drum hits within loops usually fall at regular intervals relative to the length of the loop. Here is a quick example. The position control unit can be also set to traverse the sample, which means that on each trigger the grain start position is incremented by a certain value determined by the traverse rate. This is best explained with an example. As you noticed, once the grain position reached the end of the sample, it wrapped around. This is because the position slash clip wrap parameter is set to wrap. The other options are off and clip. Next to the traverse rate number box, there is a reset button which can be used to reset the value of the traversing position pointer to zero. Traversing can be combined with all other algorithms of the position control unit since the value of the traversing pointer is just added to the position value after the randomization stage. The gain control unit does not have any special features. The values it generates are used to multiply the amplitude of each grain and therefore affect its loudness. Zero corresponds to no sound and one means that the amplitude is left untouched. The units in the bottom row specify to which output channels of the engine module each grain is sent. There are actually five control units in the bottom row, but two of them are hidden. 
SEND1 and SEND2 consist of two units each, one for controlling the channel number and the other for amplitude level. You can switch between them by pressing these buttons here and here. The amplitude level values generated by the SEND units are applied post gain, which means that if the gain is zero, then no sound will be output regardless of the individual level values of the SENDs. SENDs can be used when mono or multi-channel output with discrete grain dispersion is desired, or to send grains to external effects in addition to the stereo output. Please note that any decimal values generated by the SEND channel units will be truncated. The stereo out can be used to pan grains between two adjacent channels. It works similarly to the source parameter, since the integer part of the value defines the first channel and the decimal part is used as a panning factor. For example, a value of 1 will produce a grain only on the first output channel. A value of 2.5 will produce a grain panned equally between channels 2 and 3. Please note that currently there is no curve applied to the panning. Equal power panning and other crossfade curves are planned for the future version. If the stereo out parameter is set to 0, the output is switched off. This can be useful when you want to only use the sends. An additional feature of the stereo out is its ability to wrap around a particular number of channels. This can be useful when sending grains to a circular array of speakers since it ensures that no grains will be sent to non-existing channels. Please note that when the wrap function is on, a value of 0 instead of disabling the stereo output sends the grain to the last channel as defined by the wrap parameter. Now let's move on to the grain parameters which do not have their own control units. First there are the grain window parameters. A window is an amplitude envelope which is applied to each grain. There are three windowing functions available. Han, Trapezoid with fade in and fade out defined as percentage of the grain length and trapezoid which fade in and fade out is defined in milliseconds. If you select this toggle here, you will be able to see current windowing function on the little display below. In the future, more classic windowing functions will become available, as well as the possibility of using custom windowing envelopes. The last grain parameter we need to talk about resides in the grain effect section and can be used to reverse the grains. In the future, more grain effects like filtering, wave shaping or beat reduction will be implemented. Before we finish, I would like to mention the little section labeled All next to the list generator. The controls in this section apply to all control units simultaneously. Here you can set the range of visible elements in the list, the list selection range, or the next step for all units which have their list algorithms set to cyclic mode. This concludes part B of the control module tutorial. In the next part, we will talk in detail about the triggering mechanisms, the waveform display, and the list generator.